There are times when I can't help but wonder what heaven will be like. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians 2 verse 9, However, as it is written, what no eye has seen, what no ear has heard, and what no human mind has conceived, the things God has prepared for those who love him. The beauty of heaven is beyond our imagination. How can you and I begin to even imagine a world where the Lord will wipe away every tear from our eyes? A place where this thing called death will no longer exist. A place where there will be no sorrow, no anguish. A place where there will no longer be such a thing as crying or pain. It's hard to get your mind around heaven because it's very much the opposite of the reality that we face here on earth. We're familiar with pain here on earth. We're accustomed to tears here on earth. People cry when they're in pain. People cry when they receive bad news. But heaven, it's a place that has none of that. It's a new reality, a divine reality that's centered in and around the presence of God. And as glorious as heaven is, as wonderful a place as it is, it does also lead me to think about hell. To me, what makes hell such an awful place is the fact that you're separated from God. You're separated from the presence of Jesus Christ. You're away from his mercy, away from his love and his grace. You see, what makes hell such an awful place is not the fire. It's not the devil. But it's the fact that you're separated from God for all eternity. A lot of Christians, they have a hard time digesting the concept of hell. Oh, we can listen to messages about heaven all day long. But we don't want to hear about the reality of hell. Well, let me tell you what the Bible says in 2 Peter 3. Verse 9, it says, The Lord does not delay as though he were unable to act and is not slow about his promise as some count slowness, but is extraordinarily patient toward you, not wishing for any to perish, but for all to come to repentance. God does not wish for us to go to hell. He doesn't wish for us to be apart from him for all eternity. No, he wishes for us to repent. Repent and turn away from sin and turn to Jesus Christ. The only way to heaven is Jesus Christ. Now, Mark 9 verse 43 says, And if your hand causes you to sin, cut it off. It is better for you to enter life crippled than with two hands to go to hell, to the unquenchable fire. The Bible is telling us that it would be better to remove that which causes you to sin than to go to hell. There are only two choices. It's either we choose Jesus Christ or we choose the devil. It's either we pick eternal life or eternal separation from God. And these decisions, they're made on a day-to-day -day basis. Whether you pray or not, you're making a decision. Whether you read and meditate on God's word or not, you're making a decision. Whether you help the poor, whether you witness, whether you tell an unbeliever about Christ or not, you are making a decision. Now let's pray. My Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, you are my blessed hope. You are the soon coming King. You're the one who will rule and reign for all eternity. Father, your word tells me that if my hand causes me to sin, I should cut it off. And if my eye causes me to sin, I should tear it out. Lord Jesus, I pray that you would open my eyes. God, help me to identify anything and everything that causes me to sin. If it's some relationship or a friendship that's leading me to sin, God help me to cut it off. 
Should there be anything that is influencing me to sin, help me identify it and cast it out of my life. I choose you, Lord Jesus. I choose to serve you and only you, Master. I choose to be all in for you, Lord. Father, I choose to let go of this world and to hold on to you. Colossians 3 verses 1 and 2 say, Therefore, if you have been raised with Christ to a new life, sharing in his resurrection from the dead, keep seeking the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your mind and keep focused habitually on the things above, the heavenly things, not on things that are on the earth, which have only temporal value. It profits me nothing to look elsewhere other than to you, Jesus. It profits me nothing to chase temporal things on this earth. It is worthless for me to chase worldly things that perish and lose value. And so I pray that you would help me to chase righteousness, God. Help me to chase godliness and store up my treasures in heaven. Holy Spirit, may you influence me on a day-to-day -day basis. Help me to keep my mind set on Jesus Christ. Holy Spirit, help me to set my mind on eternal life and on things above and not to be consumed by my daily life and things on this earth. Father, your word says in Revelation 22, verses 11 and 12, He who is unjust, let him be unjust still. He who is filthy, let him be filthy still. He who is righteous, let him be righteous still. He who is holy, let him be holy still. And behold, I am coming quickly, and my reward is with me to give every one according to his work. Lord Jesus, as I live my life awaiting your return, Lord, I pray that you would give me the grace and strength to fight the good fight of faith. If I fall down, pick me back up, Lord. If I begin to sink, God, I pray that you would lift me up and place me on higher ground. If I begin to drift away, God, keep me anchored to your word, anchored to your promises. Lord, I glorify your name. Jesus, I know that you are the soon coming King. I bless your name, Lord. And I thank you for listening to this prayer. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Who do you depend on when life gets tough? Who do you depend on when you see nothing but trouble and chaos around you? Who do you depend on when you have no strength? Who is it that you depend on when you're faced with circumstances that you can do nothing about? Well, today, people of God, I want to encourage you to depend on God. Depend on a God who has given us wonderful promises in the Bible. Promises that should lift us up when life tries to push us down. Promises that should bring peace to our hearts, even if our external environment is tumultuous. God's promises are what you and I should depend on because God is a faithful God. He's a God who keeps his word because he is truth. Now, I pray that this message will serve as a reminder to each and every believer listening. I want you to know that when you begin to trust in God's promises, you'll realize that you are well taken care of. You will lack for nothing. And for those who may be wondering, what are these promises? Allow me to remind you what the Bible says. In Isaiah 41, verse 13, 
For I, the Lord your God, hold your right hand. It is I who say to you, fear not. I am the one who helps you. This is a promise. A promise for those seasons in life when you feel as though you can't get a break. It's a promise that God Almighty will help you. The Lord will come to your aid. He will be your support. He will be your pillar of strength. Isaiah 40 verse 29 says, He gives power to the faint, and to him who has no might, he increases strength. This is a promise. A promise for us to hold on to in times of weakness. God will give strength to the weary. He will help you to stand when times get tough. He will help you to move forward when it looks like you are about to be overwhelmed. In Exodus 14, verse 14, the Bible says, The Lord will fight for you, and you shall hold your peace. This is a promise for us, a promise of safety. God will fight your battles. He will fight our battles, and we need to only hold our peace. And so there's no need to go back and forth trying to fight here and there and everywhere. Instead, let God work on your behalf. Because we have a promise that the battle you face belongs to the Lord. The Bible in Philippians 4 verse 19 says, And my God shall supply all your need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. This is a promise for provision. If you have a need, God can meet that need. This doesn't mean you will have everything you want, but in Jesus Christ, you will have everything that you can ever need. So I encourage you to get to know God's promises. Get to know them and hold on to his promises. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, be praised, Master. Be glorified. I thank you for the many promises in your word. Your word says in Deuteronomy 31, verse 8, And the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you. Do not fear nor be dismayed. I praise you, Lord, because... You have promised to go before me. You have promised to be with me. You have promised to never leave or forsake me. For this, I praise you. Friends and even family members may abandon me. They may walk away from me and turn their backs on me. However, I thank you for your faithfulness. You have promised never to leave me on my own. You have promised to always be by my side, and for this reason, I will rejoice. Your word in Psalm 32 verse 8 says, I will instruct you and teach you in the way you should go. I will guide you with my eye. Lord, I will hold on to this promise. I will put my trust in you and in your word. Guide me, Lord. When I don't know which direction to go, light up my eyes. Teach me, Lord Jesus. Help me to be obedient to your word. Order my steps. In everything I do, be my God. Open the right doors for me, Father, and close the wrong doors. Bring the right opportunities my way. Father, I will trust in you and in your ways. Your word in Luke 11, verse 9 to 13 says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, and you will find. Knock, and it will be opened to you. For everyone who asks receives, and he who seeks finds. And to him who knocks, it will be opened. If a son asks for bread from any father among you, will he give him a stone? Or if he asks for a fish, will he give him a serpent instead of a fish? 
Or if he asks for an egg, will he offer him a scorpion? If you then, being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Thank you, Father, for this promise. You are a Father who is good, and you know how to give good gifts to your children. And so, King Jesus, I will depend on you when life gets tough. I will depend on you when I see nothing but trouble and chaos around me. I will depend on you when I have no strength. For all my needs, I will seek you. I will ask you, and I will knock on heaven's door. I have put my faith in you, Lord, and I will completely depend on a God who is faithful to his word. Your promises lift me up when life tries to push me down. Your promises bring peace to my heart, even when my external environment is chaotic and tumultuous. I praise you, Lord. You have promised me that when I pass through the waters, you will be with me. And when I pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over me. When I walk through the fire, I will not be burned, and the flames will not set me ablaze, because you are with me, King Jesus. Surely if you are for me, no one can be against me. I thank you for hearing my prayer. Be praised, Lord. Be glorified. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Have you ever seen a professional pianist play? Have you ever heard how they can command the keys of that instrument? Have you seen how effortlessly it can look as they glide up and down that piano? When we see a pianist perform, we see them perform as the finished work. But behind them, there are years and years of practice. Behind them are years and years of doing the same things over and over again. Day in and day out, they have developed strong habits. Habits that eventually help them achieve remarkable things. You see, your daily habits, what you do day in and day out, it shapes a whole lot more than you may think. Let's take the concept of reaping and sowing. Galatians 6 verse 8 says, For the one who sows to his own flesh will from the flesh reap corruption, but the one who sows to the Spirit will from the Spirit reap eternal life. So think of it this way. If your habit, day in and day out, is to indulge in the flesh, if it's to invest in the flesh, then the Bible says you will reap corruption because all things relating to flesh are temporary. They are going to pass away. However, when you sow into the Spirit, this means that day in and day out, you're working on what pleases God. You're working on being self-controlled. You're working on loving your neighbor. You're praying, you're meditating on the Bible. And saints, I believe we need to develop strong godly habits. The Bible in Galatians 6 verse 9 says, Let us not become weary in doing good, for at the proper time we will reap a harvest if we do not give up. Don't get tired of doing good. On a daily basis, that is. People of God, we need to develop strong routines that are firmly centered around Jesus Christ. And one of the main habits that we need to develop is daily communion with the Holy Spirit. The Amplified Translation for Ephesians 5 verse 18 says, Do not get drunk with wine, for that is wickedness, corruption, stupidity, but be filled with the Holy Spirit and constantly guided by Him. When we're filled with the Holy Spirit, then that means we're always led by the Spirit. 
It means we're constantly being guided by the Spirit. It's a state of dependency. You're no longer dependent on yourself or on your resources or your circle of influence, but you're dependent on the Holy Ghost day in and day out. That's why it's so important to be filled with the Holy Spirit. You find that when you're filled with the Holy Spirit, you're more sensitive to the voice of God. Your heart becomes more responsive to the things of God, to the instructions of God. With the Holy Spirit, you can read, enjoy, and understand the Word of God in a way that's different than if you tried it on your own. So strive to make it a habit that each day, You spend time with the Holy Spirit. Spend that time developing and building a relationship with the Lord through the help, the guidance, and the leadership of the Holy Ghost. Now let's go to God in prayer. Dear Father, God, I thank you. I honor you and I praise you. Lord, I thank you for being more than enough and all that I need. God, I thank you for giving me life, giving me health, and giving me another chance. And Lord, as I come before you today, I ask that you would help me to be a believer who fully depends on you. Lord, I pray that I would be someone who's completely devoted to you. May the Holy Spirit influence me on a daily basis. Ephesians 5 verses 1 and 2 say, Therefore be imitators of God as dear children, and walk in love as Christ also has loved us and given himself for us, an offering and a sacrifice to God for a sweet-smelling aroma. Lord Jesus, my desire is to imitate you. When you walked on this earth, the Bible tells us that you often withdrew from the disciples. You often withdrew from other people so that you could pray to God the Father. And Lord, I pray that you would give me that same grace to model my life around the example that you set. Help me to withdraw from the world and from all the busyness of life so that I can spend time alone with you in prayer. Lord, let that be my habit. When you walked on this earth, Lord, you showed people from all types of backgrounds compassion and love and mercy. You would eat with sinners. You would love on those who were shunned by society. Help me to love others, Lord. Those who don't look like me, who don't sound like me, who don't have the same background as me. Help me to love my neighbor with a godly love. Help me to love others regardless of their sin. Lord, help me not to judge others because of their sin. For I too am a sinner saved by grace. One who is in need of your mercy and your compassion, King Jesus. When you walk this earth, Lord, you are about your Father's business. You put your will aside so that the will of God the Father would be done. Lord, I pray for that kind of heart. A heart that puts your will before mine. A heart that puts you first. Let it be my delight to obey your word and fulfill the purpose and the plans that you have over my life. The Bible says in Ephesians 5, verses 15 through 17, Therefore see that you walk carefully, living life with honor, purpose, and courage, shunning those who tolerate and enable evil, not as the unwise, but as wise, sensible, intelligent, discerning people making the very most of your time on earth, recognizing and taking advantage of each opportunity and using it with wisdom and diligence because the days are filled with evil. Therefore, do not be foolish and thoughtless, 
but understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Father, please help me to walk uprightly. Help us as your children to walk with wisdom and honor before you. Raise us up to be a faithful people, a people who are not foolish and thoughtless, but raise us up to be a people who understand and firmly grasp what the will of the Lord is. Raise us up to be a people who are obedient to your will, Lord Jesus. Lord, I ask that you would renew my strength daily. I know your grace is sufficient for me each and every day. You extend the grace so that I may walk in obedience to your commands. Lord, I pray that my daily habits would be beneficial to my soul and to my spirit. Let me not sow into the flesh because the flesh is corrupt. And I don't want to reap a corrupt harvest. But instead, Lord, I pray that you would revive my spirit. Quicken my spirit, Lord, so that I may sow into that which gives me eternal life. And Lord, I know that that is you. You, King Jesus, give me eternal life. God, I thank you for hearing my prayer. I glorify you. For being a loving and a caring God. It's in the mighty name of Jesus that we pray this prayer. Amen. Have you ever noticed how the Word of God takes a deeper meaning when you're facing certain situations in your life? When you're worried, when you're anxious, Perhaps you're anxious about your finances or maybe your health. Well, the Word of God says in Philippians 4, verse 6, Be anxious for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. Or how about when you feel threatened, or when you face something that makes you feel afraid? The Bible says in 1 Timothy 1, verse 7, for God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. Perhaps you are unsettled within you. Maybe your heart is troubled. Well, John 14 verse 1 says, Let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God. Believe also in me. I urge you today to get to know the word of God for yourself. Get God's Word within you. Read Scripture as often as you can. Memorize Bible verses and meditate on them as often as you can. These are basic things that we should be doing as Christians. And the reasons we should be doing this is because we're told in Joshua 1 verse 8 that this book of the law shall not depart from your mouth, but you shall meditate on it day and night that you may observe to do according to all that is written in it. For then you will make your way prosperous, and then you will have good success. The importance of God's word is also made clear in Colossians 3 verse 16 as it reads, Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, and admonishing one another in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. And if you're wondering why God's Word is so powerful, well, it's powerful because of its longevity. The Word of God has withstood the test of time and we're told in Matthew 24 verse 35, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will by no means pass away. Another reason why God's Word is so powerful is because it cleanses. It transforms the sinner's mind. It reconstructs the sinner's heart. Psalms 119 verse 9 to 16, How can a young man cleanse his way? By taking heed according to your word. With my whole heart I have sought you. 
Oh, let me not wander from your commandments. Your word I have hidden in my heart, that I might not sin against you. Blessed are you, O Lord. Teach me your statutes. With my lips I have declared all the judgments of your mouth. I have rejoiced in the way of your testimonies as much as in all riches. I will meditate on your precepts and contemplate your ways. I will delight myself in your statutes. I will not forget your word. Now let us pray. Lord Jesus, help us to keep your word. Help me to keep your word hidden in the chambers of my heart. I pray that I would not just know your word, but I might walk in your word. Help me to keep your precepts diligently so that all my ways are directed by you. Help me to keep your statutes. May your word convict my heart. I pray that I would be someone who truly lives in obedience to your word. May your word challenge me so that I would not live a life of hypocrisy where I can claim to be a Christian, but I am not a doer of the word. Instead, Father, I pray that I may live and keep your word with my whole heart. Open my spiritual eyes so that I may see all of the wonderful revelations and promises that are in your word. Holy Spirit, I pray that you would push me to meditate on God's Word. Help me to make it a practice, to make it a routine to read the Bible and spend quality time in the Word. I know that there is a need in my life to get to know the Word of God because it will change me, it will build my character, and it will mold me into a vessel that the Lord can use. It will cut through every evil carnal and selfish thought within me and the word of god can even challenge my very attitude and perspective father the bible says in psalm 119 verse 25 to 29 my soul clings to the dust revive me according to your word i have declared my ways and you answered me teach me your statutes make me understand the way of your precepts so shall I meditate on your wonderful works. My soul melts from heaviness. Strengthen me according to your word. Remove from me the way of lying and grant me your law graciously. Father, I pray that I would be revived by your word. May I be strengthened by your word. May the Holy Spirit help me to not just meditate on your word, but to understand the word of God and become a student of the word. I pray that you would remove me from living a carnal life. Direct me to the way that leads to eternity and into your arms. Hebrews 4 verse 12 says, For the word of God is living and powerful and sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing even to the division of soul and spirit and of joints and marrow, and is a discerner of the thoughts and intents of the heart. Your word is living, Almighty God, meaning it has life. It brings life, and it is life to the believer. I pray that your word would act just like fire and refine me of all my impurities. May you burn away the sin, the cycles of sin and addiction, Lord. Just like a hammer, I pray that your word would destroy any evil stronghold in my life. And I pray that it would build and strengthen a godly character in me. May your word act just like a mirror so that it will expose my blemishes against the true likeness of Christ. And just like a lamp and a light that guides us in the darkness, may your word give me direction and reveal purpose in my life. Like food, may your word provide nourishment because your word says man cannot live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from God. May your holy word, your word which has withstood the test of time, may it cleanse and wash me. May it renew my mindset and build my faith. Psalm 119 verse 168 to 172 reads, 
I keep your precepts and your testimonies, for all my ways are before you. Let my cry come before you, O Lord. Give me understanding according to your word. Let my supplication come before you. Deliver me according to your word. My lips shall utter praise, for you teach me your statutes. My tongue shall speak of your word, for all your commandments are righteousness. I bless your name, and I praise you, King Jesus. Thank you for hearing this prayer. In the name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. The Bible says in Isaiah chapter 5, verse 20, Woe to those who call evil good, and good evil, who put darkness for light, and light for darkness, who put bitter for sweet, and sweet for bitter. The word woe, it could be translated in modern terminology as beware, or great sorrow. So effectively, the Bible is saying great sorrow be upon those who call evil good, and good evil. Now the world, it teaches us to tolerate. However, the word of God, it teaches us that sin is sin. And we ought to live according to scripture and not tolerate what scripture deems to be evil. The world teaches us to compromise. The world says it's okay to knowingly slip into sin every now and again. You know you deserve that. You deserve a treat. Don't be so hard on yourself. However, the word of God teaches us that the wages of sin is death. The world no longer calls evil evil, nor does it call sin sin. The world tells you that pride is okay because you've worked hard to get where you are. The world tells you that revenge is okay because no one has any business talking to you like that. No one should treat you like that. However, the word of God teaches us not to be overcome with evil, but instead to overcome evil with good. By virtue of us being told not to be overcome by evil, that means there's a chance that a person can be consumed and overcome by evil. So then, how do we keep an eye on ourselves? How do we ensure that we rid ourselves of any destructive characteristics? How do we ensure that we're not overcome by evil? Well, I believe that we need to assess our character against the standard that's in the Word of God. The Amplified Translation for Proverbs 6, verses 12 through 15 says, A worthless person, a wicked man, is one who walks with a perverse, corrupt, vulgar mouth, who winks with his eye in mockery, who shuffles his feet to signal, who points with his fingers to give subversive instruction, who perversely in his heart plots trouble and evil continually, who spreads discord and strife. Therefore, the crushing weight of his disaster will come suddenly upon him. Instantly, he will be broken, and there will be no healing or remedy because he has no heart for God. So here, the Word of God gives us a snapshot of the kind of evil that can so easily creep into our lives if we become complacent. So perhaps you may want to assess yourself against these evil traits. Do you walk with a perverse mouth? Do you deceive and point others in the wrong direction? Do you give instruction in order to stir up trouble? Do you plot evil in your heart? And evil could be revenge, bitter or unpleasant thoughts towards someone else. And so today, I encourage you to go before the Lord and repent. Should there be any evil in your life, any sin in your life, repent, people of God. Let's strive to be like Christ, not just in our words, but in how we live our lives. When Jesus began his ministry, do you know what his very first sermon was? Matthew 4 verse 17 says, 
From that time, Jesus began to preach, saying, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. This message of repentance is still needed to this day. Now let us pray together. Father, your word says if we claim to be without sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. I repent, Lord Jesus. I repent for the sin in my life. I repent, Lord, for every time that I have compromised with sin. I repent for every time that I have tolerated sin instead of shunning it. Father, I pray that you would give me the strength to resist the devil and the strength to resist temptation. Help me not to fall into sin. Cleanse me, King Jesus. I pray that sin would not harden my heart. I pray that worldly passions and desires would not consume me. Father, I pray according to your word in Psalm 51. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your unfailing love, according to your great compassion. Blot out my transgressions, wash away all my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions and my sin is always before me. Against you, you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. So you are right in your verdict and justified when you judge. Surely I was sinful at birth, sinful from the time my mother conceived me. Yet you desired faithfulness even in the womb. You taught me wisdom in that secret place. Cleanse me with hyssop and I will be clean. Wash me, and I will be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquity. Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence, or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me a willing spirit to sustain me. King Jesus, work within me. Cleanse my heart, Lord. Refresh my spirit, God. Let my eyes be fixed only on you. Let my ears seek only to hear your voice and let my feet walk according to your word. On my own, I am unable to overcome sin. I need you, Lord Jesus. On my own, I will fail time and time again. However, I pray that the Holy Spirit would strengthen me. Give me a zeal for godly things. Give me the boldness to turn away from all unrighteousness. I am relying on you, King Jesus, and on your strength. Help me in this life, because I can look to no one else, and I can go to no one else. Only in you can I find victory over sin. In you, King Jesus, I have freedom from sin. I thank you, God, for your never-ending mercies, your mercies that are new every morning. Great is your faithfulness, God. Be glorified, my Savior. Create in me a clean heart, a heart that yearns for you and you alone. I thank you for hearing my prayer. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen.